All right, welcome everyone. Eugene here, Hughes Motorized. Let's go over how do you fix a stripped out stud hole on your engine case here. Um, if you are unfortunate enough to have been um, the lucky recipient of an engine with the acorn nuts on it, there's a little problem sometimes what happens. Maybe they uh, get things boogered up. They put the wrong size, uh, the wrong threaded end of the, the cylinder stud into the case. Or for whatever reason, you've got an acorn nut on your cylinder stud. Well, what happens sometimes is there's still a gap and people are trying to torque it down. They torque it down and what happens, they, they'll strip the threads here in the case. So if you need to put a helicoil in it, and I would recommend, unfortunately, the best way to do it is to tear it all the way down. I have seen it to where people have, even at the factory, they went ahead and they drove the stud all the way in and it cracked the case and the stud even bound and uh, seized up the, the crankshaft assembly, in which case we had to get rid of the, uh, the case, had to swap the case out on it and uh, completely rebuild it here. But if you've only stripped the threads out in the engine, there's a fix, okay? And that fix is going to be a helicoil kit. Like I said, here's the, here's the kit that I used. And it's the helicoil brand, but you, you pay dearly for it. You get the installation tool for installing the helicoil, and you get the tap. But you don't get the drill bit. I found uh, better priced kits that have even more helicoils in the kit. They get the, you get the tap and you get the installation tool to install the helicoil and you get the proper size drill bit. So check down below for the link if you're interested. Okay. Don't buy this one unless you're just absolutely, you have to use this in order to get on the road. I bought it. I paid like 30 something dollars for it. And I found that you can get one for like about 13 bucks. I'll put a link down below for the uh, the one that I suggest you get. And it's only 13 bucks on Amazon as well. Uh, I'll put a link for an eBay kit as well that works here. But the, the majority of the engine kits nowadays, they're running eight millimeter by 1.25 threads on it, coarse thread here. Basically what you're gonna do, you're gonna drill it out. You can do this with the engine on the bike and assembled. You don't want any of these shavings that you're gonna be making drilling or threading to go down inside the into the crank area there. If you get a couple, that's ah, not going to be the end of the world, really. You've got oil down. You've got, you're going to have oil and fuel down in here. And once a chip gets down in there, it's pretty much going to stay there. But you can pack you some, uh, you know, some rags down inside and make sure that you don't get anything on there. Get your shop vac and even run your shop jack your shop vac while you're get you a shop vac run the shop vac right next to where you're drilling and tapping the hole and uh, when you pull your your tap out your drill bit out and you can get everything out that way still i recommend if you're doing it with the engine assembled be sure and stuff the inside here with some rags and the like so you don't get junk down there and we're going to put one of these helicoils in it and let me show you what we've got in the helicoil kit here and as well, another reason why the, the $13 kit is better is it comes with the drill bit. So with uh, this particular kit here, you have to provide your own uh, drill bit. And it's a 21 64th or an 8.3 millimeter drill bit in order to, to get in there. So here's the helicoil itself that goes in there. And uh, you're going, it comes with a tool that th threads into the helicoil and you've got a little this little uh, tab here that keeps it from going in all the way and you use this to install it 
Let's say this is the one that is stripped out. And you want to be careful that you don't drill all the way through into the inside of the, the crank there. Now, the majority of these kits come with a standard, it's called a through tap that, that is designed to go through a piece of steel here. Really what you need is a bottom tap. If I had a 10 millimeter nut, I would run the nut down on it, cut the tap, take the nut off, clean the threads. That way we can uh, cut the threads all the way down to the bottom, but there, there's still some wiggle room in there. Okay. And you want to make sure you get this in there straight that you're not uh, at an angle. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll take the tap, put it in there, and I want to make sure that I get it straight. We're not having it cocked off to the side. And I'm pressing in firmly, and I'm going to work it in nice and slow. And just make sure I get it in there straight. Now what we want to make sure is to do is we want to get it all the way to the bottom, but we don't want to get it good and hard all the way to the bottom. We don't want to crack through. And what you can do, you, you can feel you're cutting the threads and you'll start to feel just a, a, a bit of tension, back it up. Turn it counterclockwise to break loose any of the loose chips and kind of clean the hole out. That way we're not uh, going to break the tap and you start cussing me for giving you this idea of doing it. I'm going to go about a good two, three turns in, and then at least a full turn out. And if it gets a little hard, just take your time. Just go back and forth. And since this aluminum is soft, you don't want to do it too hard and wind up stripping the hole that you just, that you're trying to tap. If you got shop air, so much for the better to blow it out. Another thing you can do to clean the hole. Let's give it the old tappa tappa. So you can put some red thread locking compound on this. You don't want to put a lot, okay? But pretty much figure with this here, once you get your cylinder stud put back in there, it, it's going to be a permanent thing on this end. It's not a bad, not, not the end of the world, but uh, in order to, to make sure we've, we've got everything right, thread locking compound is certainly going to help. I'm going to put the helicoil on the installation tool, put it into your tapped hole, and you're going to slowly work it in. And 
and I'll work it in to where I can just tell that the helicoil is just below the flat surface here where your cylinder gasket is going to seal. Work it out, then we're going to take our cylinder stud. Like I said, you can go ahead and put some thread locking compound on this. Figure this is probably going to be a permanent fix for the engine that you put it on. If you put the red thread locker on this here and you want to go back and put a blue thread locker on it, on the cylinder stud itself, that way it, it, you have a chance of removing it. Go ahead and do so. Make sure and let the, uh, the red thread locker dry, cure that is, before you go installing the cylinder stud. And I will just push it in by hand and then and use a pair of pliers. I can tell that it's bottomed out. I don't want to push it in too hard here. Actually, you want to back it off about a little bit less not quite a quarter of a turn. You have an aluminum case and then you have a steel stud. Uh, the expansion and contraction because of heat is going to affect these differently. So if you have this all the way down and then have it torqued to where it's, it's, it's torqued real hard down against the, uh, the bottom of the hole with, with expansion and contraction, you can wind up cracking the case, okay? So then you can go ahead and, and reinstall everything. And my advice, don't use the acorn nuts. When you, when you go ahead and put your engine back together again, use a standard eight millimeter hex nut. Now, if you're in it, now if you really want to do it best, okay, so get rid of the acorn nuts, go with a standard eight millimeter hex nut and if you really want to do things right, I recommend you get you some spring washers. Okay, they're called Belleville washers. And the cool things about these here is they are domed. Okay, this washer here, it has a crown at the top. And then if you flip it over, it's dished, it goes down. So you're going to put it on the, you put your cylinder on, you put the Belleville washer on, you, with the domed side up, the crown side up, then you put your eight millimeter hex nut on and snug it down and you don't need to torque it real super tight. Just about 12 foot pounds of torque is all you need here with these Belleville washers. The main thing is you want to get it torqued evenly on all four of your cylinder studs here. You don't want to get it super tight. You don't want it to leak, but you get it super tight, you're going to wind up stripping things and then you're going to have a leak anyways. And if you're interested in the Belleville washers, I'll sell you five of the Belleville washers, five of the eight millimeter hex nuts. Hey, you may drop one. I'll give you extra in as well. I'll give you a uh, base gasket, the cylinder base gasket and a cylinder head gasket for your standard 66 cc engine. Check the link down below. If you found this video helpful, give me a thumbs up. You'll help other people find it. I want to thank you for watching. Hey, there's a subscribe button down there too. We got more stuff coming. Thanks for watching. Bye.